So we know our classic breakfast, eggs, bacon, toast, bleh. But why not just take all of our favorite parts of a breakfast and put them in a tortilla to make the greatest burrito of all time? Okay, so today we are making breakfast burritos, but not just any breakfast burrito, the perfect breakfast burrito. The one that makes you call your mom and say, hey, come over because we have breakfast burritos. That doesn't really, it's somebody, you gotta call somebody about it because it's so good, I don't know. So we're gonna make three different kinds, three different levels. One of them will be a chimichanga style. So with all that said, let's make this, shall we? Listen up really quickly, I gotta say something. The aprons sold out in less than 24 hours. I know a lot of you still want aprons, so I just wanna let you know that we've restocked them. They are back, very limited quantity. This is the last run of it, so if you do want an apron, please get one now. Anyway, thank you guys for the support, and thank you so much for selling it out so fast. It means a lot to me, and I'm honestly pretty shocked by it. So anyway, on to the recipe. All right, let's start off with some basics here. First off, tortillas. If you've been around here long enough, you know how I feel about store-bought. Papa says, big no-no. Making your own flour burrito-sized tortilla is extremely easy, and I'm using the same recipe that's in my Chipotle burrito video. Link in the description for that. It's simple, you mix the dough, you let it rest a little, slap it around, mwah, 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 divide and roll it into burrito-sized circles, and then just pop them in a hot skillet, flip, and that right there is a beautiful tortilla. Okay, so we got tortillas, but there's one more thing we gotta cross off the list before we jump into making and assembling these. That is your lovely scrambled egg. Ah yes, this is the internet's favorite thing to pretend that they know something about. Look, a soft scramble would be nice, but functionality wise, it just won't do unless you wanted to fart out the other end. We also don't want to overcook our eggs. Instead, what I'd recommend is to do what I'll call a medium scramble. Form with functionality. First, start off with a nonstick skillet, add in three tablespoons or 42 grams of unsalted butter, place it on the stove over medium heat, and once that butter is hot and boobling, crack eight eggs and whisk them together in a bowl until thoroughly combined. No salt yet. Now, add your eggs to the pan and immediately begin stirring them. As these cook, you're essentially just going to continuously stir. Sometimes I'll let the eggs sit for a few seconds and cook on the bottom, then stir it all in. That's really all you gotta do. Just continue stirring and cooking over medium heat until they are just cooked through and hold together on a spatula but aren't complete rubber. They should look like this. Then just season them to taste with salt and pepper, and that is your scramble. This will fill about four burritos. Now, burrito number one is a classic, bacon, egg, and cheese. Here I have some home-cured and smoked bacon I made not too long ago, but obviously you can go to the store and buy some. Ah! I prefer making it because I can control the thickness button, blah, 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 blah. Otherwise, find the thickest bacon you can. You'll need six to eight glorious slices. I cut mine so thick that I decided to go ahead and slice it into lardons, but you can also leave it whole in a single slice. Then just place those bad boys on a foil lined baking sheet and toss into a cold oven that's completely off. Close the door and set your oven to 450 Fahrenheit. Let those guys cook for 20 to 25 minutes or until beautifully browned and lightly crisp. The other option would be to cook it in a pan if you prefer. Then to make a simple pico, get yourself a small bowl and add one large ripe tomato that's been done Diced, one diced jalapeno. You can leave the seeds in or leave them out. Depends on how spicy you want it. Half of a finely diced sweet onion, a large handful of finely chopped cilantro, and the juice and zest of one lime. Oh, and a nice little glug of olive oil and salt and pepper to taste for the flex. Now give them a nice mix until thoroughly combined. If you want to take it a step further, you can also make a quick hash brown. You'll need one to two large russet potatoes, peeled completely, grated on a cheese grater, give them a little rinse underwater, and then place them in a hand towel to wring out as much moisture as possible. You want them dry. Then all you need is a medium-sized skillet, coat it with enough oil to coat the bottom of the pan, heat it over medium heat, and once it's hot, press in your potatoes. Let it cook for about three to four minutes, then flip and repeat on the other side until cooked through and crispy on both sides. You know, I bet that McDonald's hash brown recipe I made would also be dope. Now, to assemble, snag yourself a pretty looking tortilla, put down a decent layer of your scrambled egg or as much as you like, then hit it with your big old chunky bacon. I don't know, I'm feeling real southern drawl today. Around two slices per burrito. Some grated medium sharp cheddar, and optionally you can melt this with a kitchen torch because culinary hype beast. Top it with some of your pico de gallo and then layer on your hash browns to cover the entire thing. Almost like the roof to your house, but potatoes. Now channel your best burrito rolling skills. Roll that fatty up by folding in the edges while rolling it up from the bottom until tightly wound like this. Be careful not to tear it, obviously. Once it's closed, then just griddle that in a dry nonstick pan set over medium heat for about one to two minutes per side just to get the tortilla heated back up and lightly toasty. Then get yourself a lovely cross section and look at that. Hash browns, cheese, pico, cradled in a ring of velvety scrambled eggs. Okay, so burrito number one. Look at that. I mean, this is just a picture perfect burrito. This is the kind that you see at the gas station. 
that's not a very good comparison. This is the artwork you see in the packaging at the gas station, which is so perfect. And they have that perfect little cross section. It's got like jalapenos bursting out, but in reality, nobody knows what it is. Toasted, griddled, homemade tortillas. This is a very reminiscent moment of the breakfast sandwich video, but in the form of a burrito. It's all coming to me, all the flavors. That is fireworks. Babies singing. The hash browns get in your gum, so it makes it kind of hard to talk, because then there's like a little hash brown like, hey, what's up? Chewy toasted tortilla. The eggs are cooked perfectly. They're salty and buttery and silky. And then you've got that like classic soft, fluffy potato with a crispy outside hash brown and a little bit of some plants for nutrients. And we can pretend that it's healthy because it has pico de gallo in it. This is a beautiful breakfast burrito. Let's move on to the next one. Next burrito is a bit of a step up. Let's say sort of a steak and eggs meets the inspiration of a Philly cheesesteak. Uh, emphasis on inspiration, okay? Calm down, Philly people, all right? It's not a cheesesteak, I know. Anyway, let's start off with our spicy Mornay sauce, which is just a fancy term for cheese sauce. Begin by melting four tablespoons or 56 grams of unsalted butter in a medium saucepan set over medium heat. Once that's completely melted, whisk in four tablespoons or 60 grams of all-purpose flour. Keep whisking and cooking for about 30 seconds, then gradually whisk in one and a half cups or 350 milliliters of whole milk. Keep heating and mixing it just until that's thickened, then whisk in one and a half cups or 225 grams of grated Gruyere cheese. Then just keep whisking until it's completely melted, then turn the heat off and whisk in two and a half teaspoons of cayenne powder, half a teaspoon of fresh grated nutmeg, and salt and pepper to taste. Now, just place it to the side and keep it warm. For the peppers and onions, it's simple. Heat a pan with three tablespoons or 42 grams of olive oil over medium high heat. Then once that's ripping hot, add in one sliced red bell pepper, one sliced green bell pepper, and one yellow onion, also well sliced. Season that to taste with salt and just cook for about seven minutes, stirring and tossing occasionally until it's cooked through. It's okay if you get a little bit of char. I actually prefer that. Now last is our steaky boy. I have tons of recipes for that in all sorts of places, so I'm not going to get completely into it, but it's real simple. You dry your steak, season it generously with salt and pepper on both sides, toss it in a screaming hot pan and sear it to get a perfect brown crust on both sides. Flip, add aromatics, baste repeatedly with butter just until it reaches medium rare, rest the steak and cut it as thin or as thick as you like. Look at that beautifully medium rare. I just want to kiss it or eat it. Now to assemble, hit your tortilla with some eggs, then your sliced steak, a nice layer of your peppers and onions, and a generous drizzle of your spicy cheese sauce. Wrap that up carefully because the cheese is a little runny and griddle it the exact same way as before. And we can get a good look at the cross section. Look at that, a perfectly cheesy steak breakfast. So obviously we've got essentially a Philly cheesesteak breakfast burrito. Need I say more? Oh, wait, hold up. Whoa, I think we might have the showstopper here. I don't think I've ever had a breakfast burrito this climactic and exciting to eat. You have the spicy cheese sauce, which is essentially a morning sauce. Mornay, by the way. And you've got that beautiful butter-basted steak and the peppers and onions. It's like Philly cheesesteak, but then the eggs bring you to the front of the morning. It's breakfast time. We're enjoying our day with a cup of joe and a Philly cheesesteak burrito. Next one. Okay, I've got one last option for you. A breakfast chimichanga worthy of a kiss from Deadpool himself. Again, assemble your burrito as before. Tortilla, then your scrambled egg, various fillings of choice. Here I had some seared ham, lots of grated cheddar cheese, some avocado, flaky salt, obviously. A nice helping of pico, then roll that guy up, nice and toit, and get a large cast iron pan, fill it with oil about one and a half inches deep, heat that to 360 degrees Fahrenheit or 185 Celsius. Then carefully lower in your burrito, seam side down, and let it fry for one to two minutes per side or until crisp and golden. Keep flipping and frying the whole darn thing until it's perfectly crispy and browned. Or quippy in the way. Yeah, we haven't said that in a while, so there you go. That'll be $1,000, by the way. Then pull it out and let it drain on a wire rack set over a baking sheet. While that's cooling, you can make an easy spicy crema. All you need is a quarter cup of sour cream, a quarter cup of mayo, two teaspoons of sambal, one and a half teaspoons of smoked paprika, salt to taste, and two teaspoons of garlic powder. Mix together till thoroughly incorporated, and I almost forgot, you can add a teaspoon or two of your favorite hot sauce for some additional heat. To assemble this guy, simply plate up your chimichanga, give it a nice drizzle of your spicy crema, top with a fried sunny side up egg, some crumbled cotija cheese, some diced avocado arranged lovingly, pickled onions because <laughs> why not? And finally, garnish with fresh cilantro leaves. My oh my, she sticks the land. Look at this lovely creation. But can we get a sessy cross section? Let's give it a shot. The answer is yes. I mean, look at, including the classy egg drip. Good God, look at this. I want that in my body. This is a chimichanga breakfast burrito. A chimichanga, a breakfast chimichanga. The chimmy bomb mo bamba. This is gonna make your llama go whoa. That's how my llama. And nobody laughed. I mean, you've got the fried egg on top, which like runs into the rest of it, and then like the crispy exterior. When I say crispy, by the way, I mean 
You understand? We all have that one thing that we love to eat that we're not really proud to talk about. I love tempura fried makimono. The little sushi rolls, it's rolled up and it's tempura fried and crispy and like just oily and nasty, but it's so good at the same time. Oh. This is that in the format of a breakfast burrito. With the pickled onions and the avocado, and you have some homemade ingredients in this, there is a freshness to it. You won't feel horrible after eating this, but it is so satisfying. Breakfast burrito winner? I don't know. You wanna know what else is filled with copious amounts of breakfast dreams wound up into a voluptuous void of flour and fat? B-roll. All right guys, and that is it. So we made breakfast burritos three different ways. We had our classic bacon, egg and cheese, a little bit of hashy wow wow in there. And then we had sort of like a Philly cheesesteak inspired breakfast burrito and a chimichanga style breakfast burrito. But let me rewind real quick. A lot of people were like, Josh, that's not a Philly cheesesteak. What is that? <laughs> okay, relax. Everybody from Philly gets so angry whenever someone uses that term. It's just inspired by Philly cheesesteak in the form of a breakfast burrito. That's all it is. Why don't you just take a seat, grab a bag, and just <sighs> breathe in it until your heart rate goes down, because it's gonna be fine. These three breakfast burritos were fantastic. I was a big fan of each and every one. You pick and choose your own adventure and which one you think will make you the happiest person alive. With all that said, if you enjoyed this video or you learned something, leave a like, subscribe, and I will see you next time. Also, do I look like Lord Farquaad or I feel like I do with this new haircut? It'll grow back out, that's fine.